Hi, I'm Tony. And I'm Jan. And after a career on stage and in television, we downsized and bought a 60 foot narrowboat. Wow, that's worth the climb. We now live full time exploring the inland waterways. Join us as we share the ups and downs of boat life and the history and splendour of the places we visit along the way. Lovely views up here. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. The advice we were given was dangerous. Wasn't that spectacular? Hello. Hiya. Ha. Welcome to Making New Memories. I'm Tony. And I'm Jan. There you go. Right. So where are we? Oh. oh. Behind us here is Ghoul. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, yes, the last vlog we saw of yours a couple of weeks ago was from Ghoul. Yes, but not recently. That was when we were at Ghoul, the end of October, beginning of November. Since then, we've been all over the place. We went back to Stanyland Marina and spent Christmas there. We've been messing about between there and Barnby Dunn, our favorite little spot, I think, on the Sheffield and South Yorkshire navigation, because what they call the Don Doors, which is the Don Aqueduct, has been closed. And it only just opened recently, and we thought, right, we need some diesel. We have a little bit of a problem inside the boat, a couple of little issues inside the boat. So we need to get them done, and the guys at Gull Marina have been fantastic. Yeah, thank well, you. Well done, Dave and the team. And Steve. And Steve, yeah. <laughs> You'll see Steve in a minute. A lot of you have said, Oh, we'd like to see some more of you inside the boat. Well, to be perfectly honest, all we do in the boat is... It's a bit is, boring. It's a bit boring. We're old. <laughs> we read, we do a crossword, we fall asleep. <laughs> oh, we have some wine in between. Ah, yeah, there's some wine and, and nibbles and food. But, and a cup of tea, obviously. You've said you want to see more of us inside. Well, funny enough, that's what we've been doing while we've been at Cool Marina. We had a couple of issues, as I said, and they've been helping us out. One of which was a water pump problem. We had a new water pump. That's to pump the water from the tank at the front round to all the taps and everything. We had a new pump fitted last year and it's, it's brought up a leak somewhere on the boat and we've had to find where that leak is. So we called in Dave and the team, well it's actually Steve, who did some investigation and he had to go under the well deck, which is where the water pump and the pipes from the water tank lead to. So, here you go, have a look at this. Talk to me and explain. Talk to you and explain. We have a leak, not a Welsh one. And we had a leak for quite a while. And when we were coming to Ghoul, our bilge in the bedroom was full and Tony put the, the pump on and it was on for over an hour as we were cruising. Anyway, we got here, we'd had a new water pump put on end of last year and it seems that that has been leaking. That's been fixed and then we're still getting about that much water, which shouldn't be happening. So, huh, Tony here said, mm, it could be there's an outlet straight from the tank but you can't see what happens underneath. And we got one of the guys from Gould to come out and have a look, and Tony explained. And bugger me, it's leaking. So we've got to empty the tank, which is 600 litres, which we usually love, but at the moment, we had a smaller one. And we're gonna do it by bucket to begin with, because he did frighten me and said, hmm, don't want to touch it yet, I want the tank empty, because if I do something now, I might just need tightening you know, a valve or something, but it could be that 600 litres goes through the boat. So I'm on here and he's there. Ah, 
out rather than in. Oh, no, that's not the right thing to say on camera. You want what out? I want it out rather than in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. oh. Cameraman, help me. Oh no, we're flooding the canal. <laughs> As if it needs it. I don't, I don't think you can see in there. Um, but it was. Let's have a look, see if you can see. Can you see that gunk? Now, I'll put a link to a video where somebody actually cleaned all this out. But obviously it doesn't take long before right. it gets dirty again. So yeah, that is gunk. that much. So that. We've got from the bottom to here so we've got still that much to do still to do less in the boat <laughs> okay well we've done we've done two washes haven't we yes and tony's going to have the longest shower ever on a oh, boat oh yeah yeah i'm going to have what they call a hollywood a what oh a yeah hollywood. when i was on a submarine you can't have I thought long they were showers to do, i thought they were to do with shaving no 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 um oh. The captain always said, um, don't have long shells, don't have Hollywoods. I always wondered what he meant. So we could be here for some time. Because um, obviously we want to get this done as soon as possible because the leak doesn't appear to be bad, but it's there's a, it's steady. It's steady every five, four or five seconds. Water drips out of the... Um, tap so as Jan said there's a tap that leads from the bottom of here uh, to the water pump it's basically a shut off valve so oh. just in case anything happens I found something oh yeah the top that screws on where you fill up with water it's usually attached by a little beaded silver chain oh, yeah. and we lost ours Two years ago, and it's at the bottom of the tank. Don't think you're going to get it out, though. Are you? Oh, good. No, 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 no. Because we can't put the magnet on, otherwise it'll just stick to the bottom of the boat. <laughs> oh. That. 20. <laughs> Please don't say you're counting. I'm not really, I'm just making it up. <laughs> All back now. Are you going to get on and do it? Oh yeah, right, yeah. Well. <laughs> I know I've lost some weight, but I'm not, not, oh. not... I know I've lost some weight, but I'm not lost that much. Oh, that's a backbreaker. Um, the thing is, at least we have got this access into the water tank because <coughs> normally on a narrowboat you'll find that this tank here is the gas locker um, oh. our gas locker is behind there which is great because it can be locked away um, and he's out of harm's way um, and we've got access to the water tank because it's an integral part of the boat so there's no plastic tank within that that is just water on metal on the inside which is why it gets rusty and gunky but you can put things like Milton tablets down there, which help. I don't know whether you can see that, but obviously we've... <laughs> it's a sl we haven't got a, anything that tells us how much water we've got in the tank. You can usually tell by the water line and you can see yeah, how much water oh, we've lost. Because we're now sitting further up and the boat's not sitting down in the water so there's the water line I don't know if you can see the existing water line which is sort of like a brownie colour so I just want to um, show you what we did yesterday and we did it by using the hot water and cold water taps this morning to finish it. This is where our water tank is, let me hold on. What's 
going on, Jan? What's going on? Well, as you saw me on the front of the boat and I was emptying it bucket by bucket, the water from the tank, um, we managed to um, do some washing and showers and we em managed to empty the tank this morning. Uh, and now this is Tony. Sorry? This is Tony. Look, look who's in the well deck. You think that would be Tony? No, it's good old Steve from Ghoul Marina. Hopefully you can see how far forward he is. Because there's the well deck. Where the bags of coal and the bikes in. There's just some tins of paint and all sorts of stuff that we found under the well deck that we had to clear out to give Steve enough room to get in there. What's it like under it's there, Steve? Off. It's off. It's off? Yeah. So you're taking the valve off? I've got a valve up, I need to get the, try and get that fitting out now. That's the, so this bit would be attached to? That's a gripping, same as that, and it's on a brass spigot that's screwed into the bottom of the tank, which I need to get out, because it's, that's obviously what's leaking. Right, okay. Leave you to it, Steve. Oh, go, okay. okay, we're in the engine room. The other thing that needs doing, apart from the water tank and everything else, is here on the display. The engine hours is not working anymore. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not ticking over. It's an old analog. So the boat's 23 years old, 24 years old, and so are these dials. Hence the reason why I think this is now completely gone. So we've decided to upgrade this to a digital reader. So instead of this display here being analog, turning around like that, it'll now be a digital display. And hopefully that'll make things better. It's only three wires in the back, but of course this make, or this model, isn't available anymore, but we've contacted, or Ghoul Marina have contacted, beta marine just to make sure that the replacement one fits perfectly all being well it should be just a case of plug and play let's see what happens right so having the new engine hours display fitted and I want to get everything out of the engine room because we might have to get the deck boards up to check the engine number Serial number. How long is Dave? Well. <laughs> How are we doing, Dave? <laughs> I'm very good, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm not sure sure. <clears throat> and what have we got to do? Or what what we need uh, to set it up possibly. Apparently I've got to set the tackle up. Oh. With a different pulse. So I'll be you need to talk me through it. Is that quite involved? Fiddly. Oh, okay. There's the old one. I don't know if you can see the back, because probably you've never seen the back of one of these before. Now in the old days, when you set them up in the old days, it was just this. And you would turn that to determine the setting, basically of where idle is, you know, where, when they say tick over. Tick over is about 800 RPM revs per minute. Um, and that's that's how this this one would have been set up however on the new beast which is over here <laughs> um, it's a little bit different sorry about the, the light let me see if I film it this way but you can you see this button here so what happens is you press that button and that skims through the menu settings um, just like you would on say a clock radio or something like that and now I'm going to turn the engine on <laughs> Go up to 800 RPM. I don't know if you can see that again. There you go, there. that's 800 RPM. And here is the new engine hours meter, quite easy to read. Thank goodness. Um, and then if I try and get a better position, well, I, mean, I need to close the lid. Hold on. That's better, right? Is that better? Can you see that? Right, so eight of them. So now I take the push the pin in. 
for now out of gear, stick it in reverse and hopefully this will move up. There we go, one new taco. Excellent, all done, well done, thank you Dave, thank you Paul Marina. With all the work done, it was just a case of putting everything back. Hey, Steve's got some nice legs. I told him I wouldn't get his bum in. <laughs> nice one, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, great job. Um, we're all tickety boo now. Um, touch wood. Well, I can't cross my fingers. Yeah. That's it. Um, we're all okay, pump wise. I've just got to keep an eye on the bilge here, the cabin bilge. Yeah, that was that was. Oh. That was full. That's underneath my chest of drawers. Yeah. Um, and we were listing like mad. Yeah. And he thought it was my weight at the front. How <laughs> rude. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was no. the bilge, the cabin bilge was full to capacity. We have a bilge pump in there, but it's not automatic. You have to switch it on manually. Maybe one day we'll get it changed, I don't know. We've never really, to be honest, until now, had a problem no. with it, so it's never been an issue. But it's tough to check it now, maybe but once it, every two weeks or yeah. once a week. Yeah, I think monthly checks, when we do monthly checks, we'll add it to the check checklist and do it then. Um, and then I think I said the other issue was the down here, the rev counter or the taco, as it's called, had to be replaced. So Dave did that, took the old one out and put a new one in. Now you've seen a lot of this before because we're heading up towards the glass factory. We've got to go through a lock and then we'll get to Ferry Bridge and there's the lock there and then Castleford. There's the lock there and then on to Lemonroyd. That's closed at the moment for a mechanical and electrical failure. <laughs> so, we're, and Jan's got to go off to see some family in Fishguard. In Pembrokeshire, South Wales. For the Easter weekend. So I'm going to be on my own. Well, hey lads. Um, so, yes, I'll be on my own. So we need to get Jan off somewhere where she can get picked up. Where do you want to get picked up? <laughs> anywhere, my age, anywhere. She's open to offers. No, my brother's coming to pick me up because he lives in Sheffield, yeah. so he's not too far away. So if we can get to Lemonroyd, that's fine, because there's a little marina there and I can hold up for the weekend. I've got plenty of jobs to do on the boat. I may well film some of them, I've no idea. But the plan is today to get to Ferry Bridge at least and more up there somewhere. You'll remember it in this vlog. No, that vlog. You'll remember it in this vlog. You'll remember it in this vlog because <laughs> That vlog. Just go and find it. <laughs> uh, because the floods were so bad last year that it overflowed the actual flood lock itself. And we did a runner. And a we did a runner. Fast runner. Yeah, oh yeah. Anyway, so that's where we're heading today. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but that's where we're going to.
Along this stretch of the canal you'll occasionally see big mounds of boulders chucked in the water at the side. Obviously you've got to avoid them, you're not going to moor up against them, but they're there principally to help any animals or anything like that that happens to have fallen into the water. As you can see from around here there's a lot of grazing land so it's not unknown for sheep particularly to fall into the water because they can graze right up to the edge of the canal and having these boulder stairs makes it easier for them to get out. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Three herons on the bridge. Oh no, two of them have flown off. Just the one now. Mooring up at Ferry Bridge. How far off are you going? I'll take that one there. You should be able to take the one in front. There are bollards here, but they're a little bit of a way away from the boat. So, thankfully, the armco isn't all covered in concrete. And we can get a chain down and tie off to a chain. Far more secure. And just beyond here is the River Air. Go and have a look. Grass has just been cut, well not so long ago. Very nice, very smart. Yes, yeah, so last time we were here, last time we were here, the river was in flood. And here we have the River Air. Obviously you can't go any further than the floating boom. And then just beyond that is the flour mill. We hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. Thank you to all of you for watching, sharing, commenting and subscribing. Thanks to our patrons and everyone on Buy Me A Coffee. And if you've enjoyed this vlog, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It's totally free. And then when you have subscribed, press that bell icon. Ding! Thank you, Jan. And YouTube will let you know next time we upload a vlog. In the meantime, stay safe, everybody. Happy cruising. Bye for now. Bye.